here in Jupiter. Very shortly, the VIPs and the invited guests are going to start to make their ways outside to watch the liftoff. There are two terraces here on either side of the building that give a fine view onto the pad. And if the skies are clear, which they look clearer than this morning anyway, the visitors will have quite a sight. Here in Jupiter are the operational teams, but in fact, to launch Ariane or Soyuz or Vega, we also need security, army, firefighters, journalists, and other professions. Split screen image here showing the propellant feeder arms in the middle of the launcher, liquid hydrogen on the left, liquid oxygen on the right. What are they doing? Well, they're putting propellant into the upper stage tanks. And you'll see these arms pull back at about five seconds before ignition, and the arms you can see in the middle of the gantry, the yellow bars going into the upper stage. This is one of the last things you see before liftoff, that is, so we like to take a minute and mention it. Minute and a half to go. GSAT-17 arrived here on May 15th and went right to the satellite preparation buildings. In Marsat, uh, Helisat arrived the week after on May 23rd and began its tests. You're going to hear the DDO call out the one. À tous de DDO, attention pour moins une minute. All those tests now to ready the launcher are over. Everything that has had to be done has been done. Top à zéro moins une minute. We're into the final 60 seconds. Give us a chance to say hello to our friends at ISRO in Bengaluru, to our friends at Arabsat, to Inmarsat tonight in London, Hellasat uh, people in Athens and in Larnaca in Cyprus, to the Talis Alenia space teams in Cannes and Toulouse, hello locally to the Kourou Cinemari and Cayenne sites, to our industrial partners ISA and CNES, and to all of you following the broadcast on the internet. We hope you are enjoying it. If you're not settled in, pull up a chair and enjoy the launch because we're going to cut away and let you listen to the DDO and he will call out the final seconds. Remember, the cryo arms will open at about minus seven seconds. A tous de DDO, attention pour le décompte final. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Allumage Vulcan. Allumage UAP, décollage. Les paramètres de bord sont nominaux. in French Guiana with a lot of fire. Nice shot of the birds on the port side as she took off. I don't know if you could see that. The DDO is saying that everything is going smoothly on board as Ariane begins her mission, the seventh for Ariane space. Two new satellites for new services for new customers around the globe. The two boosters are providing 90% of our thrust right now, propelling the launcher along her trajectory at an ever higher velocity. 774 tons is her mass at liftoff. She's burning five tons of fuel per second, 2.5 tons in each booster, plus the core stage in the middle is burning another 300 kilos of fuel every second. And Ariane 5 now following the program in her onboard computer, which is located on the upper stage. This gives all the orders, including stage separations, which we will see. Propulsion and trajectory normal, says the DDO. We're in the first of four flight phases. We'll describe each in turn and in detail, so you can follow Ariane as she heads east across the Atlantic. Right now, the first flight phase. The single first, first stage engine and the two boosters are burning. The boosters will each consume 240 tons in just over two minutes, another 20 seconds roughly for them to burn. They'll be the first to be extinguished. You'll hear that also the DDO. We're 15 kilometers from the pad here in, boot in uh, Jupiter, and the sound Separation is just coming deux All right, those are the separation of the two boosters. You saw that. The DDO confirmed it. 
This is what it looks like up there. There is one on the left-hand side of the vehicle, outside of, uh, out of the camera range. Before the boosters are empty, their push diminishes in the onboard computer, the same one, senses this drop in acceleration and separates them, and they fall 500 kilometers from shore into a protected area. French Guiana was in part, remember, chosen as a base for its opening on the ocean, launches posing no threat to local population. Take a look at the bottom of your screen on the left altitude, on the right our speed. We're over 100 kilometers and we're past two kilometers per second. We're getting close to the separation of the fairing, which will be next up. And there we are, right on top. Separation of the kilometers. Revealing the silver box on the top is Helisat Inmarsat. Separation is given by two pyrotechnic cords, and there's one half you can see, the other half on the right side, out of uh, camera range. These cords actually remove the fairing by a contained explosion, very small explosion, that pushes the two parts of the fairing apart. We can separate the fairing now. Why? Because we're out of the dense layers of the atmosphere, and uh, neither friction nor heating, which could disturb the passengers. Also, we can get rid La of any dead weight. The fairing weighs almost two and a half tons, so we don't need it anymore. We let it go. Ariane 5, of course, the heavy lift launch vehicle. The other two members of the family Soyuz lifting middle-sized payloads, two and three tons. And Vega, the light lift vehicle for missions of one ton. Our next film gives you a closer look at one of our upper passenger operators, Helisat 3. Next year, that new satellite will be launched also by Arian Space. We should have a launch replay coming up for you. By now, are. that's the, the first one. We so much may have several shots so of the launch the vehicle replay. You can relive those moments as Ariane 5 took off from the pad close to eight minutes ago. Square. We have cameras in the film where we're also picked up by our first downrange tracking station in Natal over the border in our neighbor Brazil. A fast mission tonight, Helisat Inmarsat will be on station in just 10 days. Mikeli Franke of Inmarsat this morning told us that last month they launched from Florida and the satellite won't be on station until early August because of the missions different involving electrical orbit raising and such things, but not today. They're going to be right there in a week and a f just a few days. Extinction de l'EPC sur commande de guidage. There you saw the extinction of the separation de l'EPC and the separation and watch the nozzle on the upper stage. There it is turning right on. These three commands, extinction and separation of the upper stage and ignition of the upper stage given by the onboard computer in about 13 seconds. And our onboard camera giving a shot of the lower stage falling back into the Atlantic off the Gulf of Guinea. We are now in the third powered flight phase, the single upper stage engine that'll burn until plus 25 minutes or 16 minutes roughly. Job of the upper stage is to take the satellites to their injection point, position them for separation, and then release them. That's its propulsion role, but it has a second role that comes during its ballistics phase, and we'll get back to that in a while. Our next film, another look at our first passenger, this time on the Inmarsat side. 